Dell's Latitude presents itself as an overall solid all-round office device. The chassis is neither thin nor lightweight and likely will not win any design awards either. A gray, inconspicuous, understated 14-inch laptop, the focus is obviously on the internals. Unfortunately, there are a few missteps here as well, as our review will show. Thunderbolt 4, a conventional Ethernet RJ45 port, smart card reader, NFC, and a SIM card slot for web access on the go make for a very compelling list. Aside the AX201 Wi-Fi adapter and RJ45 Ethernet port, the Dell laptop also comes with a SIM card slot under the display, which can be accessed from the back of the device. Therefore, the Latitude can be retrofitted with a compatible LTE module. The 720p camera in the lid is barely worth mentioning. It captures washed-out pictures that suffer from immediately noticeable artifacts. Dell plays it safe on the side of security and complements the fingerprint sensor with a Dell Secure port, an integrated smart card reader, and a webcam shutter. It could not be any easier. Loosen the Phillips screws, pry open between the hinges with a plastic spudger and remove the bottom plate. Below it, there are two RAM slots, the Wi-Fi module, an empty slot for an LTE modem, and an M2 slot holding the SSD. Since the keyboard area is not uniformly rigid, it slightly yields on the right side. The key feedback is good overall. The actuation point is distinct and the travel moderate with spongy key presses. Unlike on the other models, the keys of the Latitude are coated with a rubberized material. While cutting the track point may still have been acceptable, many Latitude fans will sorely miss the four mouse buttons. The haptic feedback of dedicated buttons, which many users have become accustomed to and fond of, is missing with the new clickpad. Dell relies on a traditional 16 to 9 IPS 14-inch display with 1920 by 1080 pixels. Neither the pixel density of 157 ppi nor the 60 Hz refresh rate are particularly impressive. The same holds true for the brightness, which comes in at 311 nits at best and 281 nits on average. The 14-inch model does not appear to concern itself with color spaces, at best, the Dell covers 54% of the sRGB color space. Our variation of the Dell Latitude 5420 with the Core i5-1135G7, 8GB of RAM and a 256GB SSD is the base configuration of the model, which retails for just under $1,000. Let us take a look at the Cinebench R15 loop. The first two loops benefit from the 40-watt PL1. During the third loop, the CPU deals with its SOC temperature of 95 degrees Celsius, by dropping the PL1 to 35 watts and 31 watts immediately after. The clock rate also falls to 3.5 GHz. In short, all signs point towards a well-designed temperature management system, which, despite the lack of a short burst, optimizes for long-term peak performance with alternating cooling off and boost phases. The Latitude 5420 has two sides really noisy and completely silent. The latter state can be observed during idle, where the fan turns off entirely. When browsing the web, the chances for quiet operation are good, since the fan will mostly stay switched off under low to moderate load.
We measured a real-world Wi-Fi runtime of almost 13 hours at a display brightness setting of 150 nits and with a fully charged battery. The battery has a capacity of 63 watt-hours and can only be charged with a USB Type-C power adapter such as the included 65 watt charger. Dell's Latitude 5420 presents itself as a generously equipped all-round business laptop that leaves nothing to be desired in terms of connectivity and security. The upgradability is excellent and none of the major components are soldered. The input device changes did not pan out. Instead of mouse buttons and a track point, the Latitude offers a clickpad with haptics so poor that even die-hard reviewers resort to connecting a USB mouse. If you want to learn more about the Dell Latitude 14 5420, visit our detailed review on notebookcheck.net. Thanks for watching.